was a curious choice by Stenhouse to take that outside. Hart is going to try to lead this first lap off the of four. There he does. Go. Three different leaders in the first lap. Only one of them counts. Hornish at the start finish line. See a little Grafton kind of taking over on that straightaway. Hornish gets a big push from Stenhouse. See right there, Kyle Bush trying to take that fourth spot. Parker Kligman got just a little bit loose down the middle of one and two. Black 54 car, green M logo on the hood. Handful there for Eric McClure in the 14. Nice save after a big wiggle there. You saw in turn three. Second place, Dylan three, Stenhouse six. We really expected watching yesterday's practice, that second groove where the six car Ricky Stenhouse is, to be utilized a lot today. That was when the racetrack was a lot hotter and a lot slicker, so I think it's going to allow us to see a lot of racing just like this. Really good illustration there as you watched Dillon in the three and Kligerman in the 22 go through that bottom lane in three and four. The car's hopping up and down over some of the bumps that are in the bottom side of the track. Yeah, Stenhouse was able to hang right there on the right rear of that three car. And, hey, little racing going on there. Yeah. But anyway, he's able to take advantage of that and finally get the spot. This has got to be a really tough racetrack to drive, Dale. I know you had not driven on in a couple years, but it really looks like a challenge. Yeah, you really have to hustle, especially these cars. And when they have tapered spacers uh, on them underneath the carburetor there that you have to, that takes away a lot of the horsepower. So with that, you really have to drive them far into the corner and not be out of the gas long if you're going to make time. And those bumps that we talk about are kind of strategically placed. It's not that they were put there, but they have evolved over the years, and it makes it that much more difficult to drive these cars. A lot of fun because it's fast, but a real challenge. 33, Brendan Gaughan really had to kind of step his car up the track from the bottom side of two. He's racing underneath Mike Bliss in 44, and that's for eighth place. Yeah, Brendan Gaughan did the same thing in qualifying, walked it all the way up to the wall, actually made contact. They didn't make really any repairs to it, so they kept their starting position. That's one of the things as a driver you really have to watch out for here is that car on the outside. You may think you have him cleared. You have to be careful when you're walking the car up that you don't cut someone off and get both of you in trouble. A couple of Illinois natives. Justin Allgaier, 31, bypassing Danica Patrick in 7. That for 13th place while up front. After Sam Hornish has led the opening six laps of this race, here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Yeah, I heard him say that they've gotten this team kind of back to basics and, and a baseline that they had used successfully this year to win races. They ventured out trying new things, and it didn't really work. Looks like it's working good today, though. And lead change. See Kyle Busch there in fourth. He's lost a little bit of time right there, especially on this lap. I was watching him out of turn two. He had to come out of the throttle. Looks like he might have lost the front end over there and had to keep it out of the wall. Got us a little knot of traffic here. Kenny Wallace in the 09. 44, Mike Bliss. 43, Michael Annette. 31, Justin Allgaier. Just behind them, Elliot Sadler, who had a terrible qualifying lap, but is lucky he wasn't pulling out a backup car. Yeah. <laughs> trying to work so. his way toward the front. Yeah, it was, a, it was actually a great save is what it was. He should have crashed that car. He got real, real loose in one and made a kind of a good recovery for a second lap to start a little further up. 18 Ryan Truex by Brendan Gaughan. That'll be for eighth spot. We'll watch these times kind of right now as I look out the window here. I see a little more brightness out there, which means you're getting a little more sun. Probably the racetrack going to heat up. Now we're getting some rubber down, too. I think this racetrack will start really getting a little more slick, less grip. See who's got the best handling car now. Elliott Sadler in that two started back in 15th place. He's only up to 14th. Played it a little safe to let the traffic shake out. Now trying to pick his way toward the front. Fourth place, Kligerman 22, Kyle Busch 54. See Kyle already moving up, way up the racetrack. Oh, Stenhouse Jr. had all kind of trouble getting through turn two. Here comes Hornish for the lead. Yeah, that's where we're going to see a lot of this action today. And it, it, a lot of it comes from back in the center of the corner, but it really escalates as they carry that speed off. Well, let's remember that Stenhouse running second at Dover actually lost the car by himself. Oh, it came close to doing the same thing there but never officially lost the lead. Not yet. 
You know, that's just one of the things with this young man, though. He drives every lap with everything that that race car has in it. And when you get on a place like this to where you have those bumps, then that could get him in some serious trouble at times. Wow. Yeah, but it's fun to watch a guy like that. See, really loose. You can move up the track and help that looseness some. This oh, was that yeah, stepping ooh, out. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ran completely yeah. Out, out of the groove. And some Hornish. And never lost a lead. Yeah, and Hornish got sideways just trying to dodge him right there. See that six car step out and watch Hornish have to cut hard. And this car get loose. They heard the engine to him change there. There comes Dylan. Second place, changing hands. Austin Dillon in the three, moving up. Well, we've seen this a lot this year in all of these races. And Andy, I know you pointed out a lot. And this young man, I'm talking about Austin Dillon in the three. He lets, kind of lets the racetrack, the race, everything come to him, and then he just keeps marching forward. Remember, as you see those top three come by, the blue spoilers on the back of the car. Nationwide insurance, dash for cash drivers, highest finishing of those four drivers, these three, plus Elliott Sadler today, highest finisher wins $100,000. And back to this battle. I think Kyle Busch now getting the better of Parker Kligerman. This goes back and forth about yeah. three times in the last five laps between these two. Yeah, it looks like Kyle's decided that he's just going to have to, for this time, keep this car up on the high side of the racetrack. I would say he's probably very loose, and he can, can run up there, not turn the wheel as much, and maybe miss some of these bumps that are right on the bottom of the track. He's making his own groove up there right now. <laughs> Stenhouse is up there, too. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the defending NASCAR Nationwide Series champion, leading for only the second time since his win at Iowa Speedway in May. Riding with the race leader, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and a check of the rearview mirror early in the FCP 300 at Chicagoland Speedway. NASCAR Nationwide Series running on this Sunday. And there's the gap, first to second. Stenhouse in the six to Austin Dillon in the three. Well, Stenhouse didn't waste any time going way, way up, up the track to get, try to find some grip. I really like that in a driver that will just search around, find the best place for his car to work. Yeah, I think we expected it, I think, to, to move up some, but we're seeing the groove much higher even than what we saw in practice yesterday. Good you got to get up there to run because a lot of these cars are extremely loose right now. Sorry about that, Dale. Good look back through the top 15. There's Danica Patrick, who has fallen back to 16th. Got it. Trying to work on that entry. Entry's everything when you're running up top. I'm trying, but it is so loose. If it's loose, we just drive it in straighter there. You heard him say drive it in straighter. And she says it's a four out of five loose. DJ, what can she do before this pit stop to help out that race car with her line? Yeah, Vince, that's a good question. And one thing that she can do, it's hard to do as a driver to make yourself go in the corner even higher. But if you can stay up there where you don't have to turn the wheel as much, you might roll out of the throttle and get back to it a little sooner where you can drive it off the corner more so you're making that corner longer and then you make the straightaway longer by getting in the gas sooner but uh she could arc and stay up you don't have to arc it anymore but just actually run higher but that's something that you have to really work on as a driver to get used to that feel i'm telling you, you see her sawing that wheel yeah I mean, that car's loose big time well, She's four out of five job. that's on the edge that's out there being out of control as you that's, might say or something that's right there. <laughs> there contrasting that here's your race leader ricky stenhouse I mean, you can see, I mean, Danica's really tentative that way. You can't, can't hardly turn it left and just almost as many right turns as there are left. You know, versus a car that's tight, when your car is loose, you have a much harder grip on the wheel, and you're, you're really tense and moving the wheel. You feel like you have to to keep the car under you. I love the days when the drivers wear the clear shields, and you could see the yeah. eyes as he's checking that rearview mirror and... Yeah, you can see right there. See, Danica turning the wheel right a lot, and, and yeah. Stenhouse pretty smooth, kind of a let, get little tug on the wheel. Yeah, we heard Stenhouse talk about his car being loose earlier. I believe that car's tightened up some because you watch him. I mean, that car looks like it's driving pretty sweet right now. Or he's making it look like that anyway, yeah. and he's leading. 09 is Kenny Wallace, 33 is Brendan Gaughan, 44 is Mike Bliss. This is 11th, 12th, and 13th. They're overtaking Danny Eflin in the four to put him a lap down. And joining in on the back of the fun here, Michael Annette in the 43.
Caution free so far in the early going. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Fans check out Race Buddy. Enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. Log on to NASCAR Nationwide Series.com slash Race Buddy. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. Ryan Truex, Elliott Sadler, Justin Allgaier are looking back from Sadler in that two car. Sadler had the fastest lap on the track last lap. He's on the move. He's going forward. Remember, Elliott started back in 15th place after nearly crashing in qualifying. Here is for third place, Kyle Busch, 54, going after Austin Dillon. Yeah, I think Kyle Busch's car may have tightened up, too. I believe his car started out extremely loose, and now he's kind of settled in and able to move forward. Not able to complete that pass yet, but I believe he will. See, Elliott Sadler has moved up a spot there to that eighth spot around Ryan Truex. Really hard to complete that pass on the bottom. Yeah, it makes it difficult, especially after you get some laps on the tires. This going on just a couple of car lengths behind Sam Hornis Jr., the second place runner, who was in his own fight with Austin Dillon for position a few laps ago. Stenhouse Jr. has opened up a three and a half second lead on that race for second place. We go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance and Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Alan. Ricky says uh, that the car feels good, but it's not perfect. Listen in. It's actually tight entry to center. Probably a two tight. Can't run it hard on entry. Probably a four loose up off. Simple. And he's had to adjust his driving style just slightly to be able to deal with uh, the fact the car was tight on entry but very loose on exit. Now behind him is the 12 car of Sam Hornish Jr. Sam led the first six laps today prior to being passed by Ricky Stenhouse. Sam says the car is free all the way through the corner, entry, middle, and exit. But guess what? He changed his line to run higher on the racetrack and was able to move back by Austin Dillon to take the second spot back away. Dave. Having fun watching the blue spoilers? Well, Austin Dillon, by winning the first Dash for Cash bonus last week, is the only driver who could sweep and take home a million dollars by winning the race August 4th at the Iowa Speedway. Right now, his car is a little bit tight, but what an incentive to win or to do very well today. Mike? Kyle Busch has a couple of career victories in the Nationwide Series here at Chicagoland Speedway, looking to add to that total today. His car, though, not perfect as he makes the move to the inside, trying to pick up a position, looking for a third spot on the racetrack. He's been fighting a loose handling race car all afternoon, but it looks like it's good enough there to make the pass. Doc? Well, the 21-year-old Parker Clerk has been a lot of pressure on this young man today. His third start of the year, but he's got to do something to show people he deserves to be in this Penske ride. Right now, the car is very tight on entry, tight in the middle, a little bit loose off, but he's just hanging tight to be able to stay there in the top five. Vince. The six car, Brian Scott, a driver that many thought would do well here today, likes what he's got. He says the car is getting better through the run. It was a little loose in one and two early and tight in three and four, but says it's coming to him. He's run well in the mile and a half in the past. He's looking good so far early, Dave. Cole Witt told me this morning that that 88 car, they spent most of their time on the bottom group of the track. You can see he's moved up to the high side now, but he said, we got our car to work really well down there. We'll try to use that to our advantage as a lot of guys set their cars up for the high line. Just a little free right now for Cole. Mike? Elliot Sadler has had his share of adversity this week, fighting a stomach virus. I spoke with him before the race. He said he's about 60%. I asked him if there's a contingency plan. He said, you'll have to drag me out of this race car. Feels like he's got a pretty good race car so far, moving his way up through the grid. Eighth right now, although he could use a little bit more side bite, Dave. Our in-race reporter, Justin Allgaier, started this race mostly loose. He then reported that the car was starting to get tight, and then on lap 23, he said the car was real tight. They needed to make it adjustment on the first pit stop. Vince. And slipping back to 10th is the 18 of Ryan Truex. Crew Chief Matt Lucas told me before the race we're going to start a little bit snug as you see Truex go to the low side to try to pass Allgaier. He said we're going to start a little snug and that's exactly the way the car is handling. He says it's a little bit too tight right now, Alan. All right, Vince, so there are your top 10. There are 21 on the lead lap at the moment. Caution free to this point. And a quick side note that there are 12 drivers that have already gone to the garage, the start and park mode, early in this Chicagoland race. Quickly through the first 50 miles, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in pursuit of another win. Out in front by 3.2 seconds. 
The Willis Tower, downtown Chicago. Standing tall, wondering yesterday during our coverage of practice about what it'd be like to work on one of those towers. And a race fan tweeted me that they had just replaced one of those towers using a helicopter like a couple of weeks ago. That would have been fascinating to watch. We are watching the STP 300 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series here at Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, just south of Chicago, where Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has done most of the leading through the opening 50-plus miles. There is Stenhouse in pursuit of another win on this season in pursuit of a hundred thousand dollar nationwide insurance dash for cash bonus and in pursuit of closing some ground on elliot sadler and austin dillon in the fight for the nascar nationwide series championship sam hornis jr putting the lap on tanner berryhill in the 17 car 18 year old one of the young drivers in the field today and there you see the gap from hornish up to stenhouse and back to kyle bush who's closing in in third that black 54. Yeah, Kyle doing a nice job, and as we they heard that report through the top ten there a few minutes ago, I think it was interesting, the cars and drivers that complained of their cars being loose to start this race, they're tightening up, and that's why we see them stay up front and, and continue to move forward, and Andy, I believe, as they make pit stops, they're going to have to make these adjustments to start them off a little free. Yeah, that's what a lot of guys are seeing. I think that's what's wrong with Austin Dillon. He made a pretty good run there at the beginning, and now he's having a lot of problems and lost spots. And like I said, the looser cars are moving to the front, the tighter ones, not so much. As we've gone this long green run, you see that a lot of the racing has settled out. Here's the best fight for position at the moment on the lead lap. This is 12th and 13th. Kenny Wallace, 09. Brendan Gaughan, 33. Now, expecting green flag pit stops to begin in just a little bit. So we're going to squeeze in a break, come back for the green flag pit stops. Remember, Justin Allgaier said this pit entry at Chicago Land was a handful, and you couldn't afford to make a mistake coming into pit road for a stop. Green flag pit stops have just begun for some of the leaders, Mike. Kyle Busch on pit road. The car had been just a little bit too loose. Mike Bean debating whether or not to make a track bar adjustment, electing not to do it. Just four tires and fuel, Doc. Four tires for Sam Hornish. Left rear air pressure. Only the car had been free all the way through, so the car should take off better. Hornish away. Here comes the sixth car, your leader, Ricky Stenhouse. Down pit road, first pit stop of the day. Stenhouse hitting about 11 laps earlier than his fuel window. They have decided to go down on track bar, take some air out of the right rear, right front, I should say. That'll help the car on entry. Let's go to Mike. Elliot Sadler saying he wants to help the right rear. Needs a little bit more side bite there without killing the center off. They'll take four tires and fuel with an air pressure adjustment. The three of Austin Dillon's making way, his way down pit road. The reason he fell back to the fifth position from second was because when he wants to put the gas pedal down, the car won't turn any longer. So they'll come in, make a chassis and air pressure adjustment and four tires for Austin Dillon. Penalty coming for Kyle Busch. Too fast exiting the pit lane. That'll be costly. Brendan gone. Hit the commitment cone. And we have a car slow on the apron of turn one that's going to bring out the caution. Looks like the 23 of Jamie Dick has stalled on the apron of turn one. There's that scattered commitment cone. I think that on that 23 car, I think they tore something up coming off the pit road. Maybe in the drive line, something. You could not get going, couldn't accelerate. Not uncommon, right? I mean, I well, no. I don't see it as much anymore. Most of these drive line components are pretty tough. All right, here's your commitment cone problem. And you can't hit it. Punt. Uh, the poor cone. Yeah. Should actually be uh, somewhat of a break for Kyle Busch. Yes. On his uh, penalty. It will be. So Brandon is actually the leader. And right now NASCAR is trying to get him to slow down so they can get the pace car in front of him and gather up the field. And he has not gotten that message yet, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, he thought he was having to catch up after yeah. missing that commitment cone. He thought he was going to have to catch up to whoever the leader was. He didn't realize he was. <laughs> a 
I guess Justin Allgaier wasn't kidding when he said it's tough to get onto this pit road. Well, it is really tough. He comes up kind of at an odd spot for you as a driver on these mile-and-a-half tracks. And, you know, you're wide open. You want to get as far around there and carry as much speed as you possibly can. Wow, look at, look at that. Kyle gets on the apron. Throwing a few sparks. So first caution coming out at the tail end of a series of green flag pit stops when Jamie Dick in that 23 wound up stalled on the apron of turn one. Pit road is closed here, but Brendan gone may be out of options where fuel is concerned and has to come in anyway. Well, he's going to start at the rear regardless because of the commitment cone violation. Right. Actually, a break the caution was that it came out because Brendan would have had to make a penalty pass down pit road for that. Trying to get some fuel to the pickup. He is having some fuel issues out. So an eventful uh, turn of events here for Brendan Gaughan. First, the difficulties getting to pit road. Going back out on the racetrack. Looks like he just ran up on Josh Richards there. A lot faster than he was expecting to. Goes back out, goes around, and now Doc, he has to come down pit road before it's open. Yep, he's out of gas, Alan, uh, so he had to come in. He had to wait and get it on, get it completely full of Sunoco fuel. They put four tires in. And what Brendan said on the radio was on that replay a moment ago, he said, guys, either I hit the 39 in front of me or I dodged that car and hit the cone. I had two choices. I decided to hit the cone and not hit the car in front of me. That's what he told Ernie Cope, his crew chief. Ernie said, you did okay. Caution's out now, so we're going to be able to come in. And uh, obviously, he had to come in and coast down pit road out of gas. It also looked like Eric McClure in the 14 might get a penalty, too, because he... He actually followed Brendan through there. I know he didn't hit the cone because he wasn't there. He was gone. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say he might have helped him because he certainly was going to hit it if it had have still been there. Now, the leader is Mike Bliss, that 44 car, down on the apron. Not yet made a pit stop in that cycle of green flag stops, but pit road is closed. Still closed. So can he make another lap? He'll run on the apron. Running on the apron, it keeps that fuel over near the pickup. The pickup's in the right rear corner of the fuel cell for obvious reasons cars off making left-hand turns and that's where it puts the fuel see the commitment come laying on the entrance pit road so looking at that replay uh, also for the benefit of uh, NASCAR to sort out who gets the commitment line violations in that cycle of pit stops. Yeah, you basically have to have all four tires inside of that, obviously, to keep from hitting that. And after that cone was gone, there were some cars there, too, that were literally outside of that box in that area. All right, so pit road's going to be open this time. We were talking about the difficulty of getting on this pit road, and I, I think I made my statement was it's in an odd place. I realize it's always off of turn yeah. four, but it cuts at you at a different angle. So it's not like I didn't un understand that they're all right there. But you're, you're running fast all the way around the corner to carry as much speed as you can, and where these drivers try to hit that, it, it comes at a, a makes it most difficult to get on there and keep your car under control and at the speed you need to be. Was it that look Andy gave you that let you know you might want to clarify <laughs> Both that? Both of you looked at me. Yeah, I guess <laughs> a, a, an odd place to me would be like in the middle of the backstretch or something. <laughs> All right. Mike Bliss will give up the lead for pit stops here. The second place car who will now become the leader is Ricky Stenhouse. So there are going to be a bunch of people in position to take a wave around and get some ground lost on the exchange of pit stops back. Vince the 18 of Ryan Truex is running near the back of the lap or the uh, lead lap car. So they came back in to top off with Sunoco fuel. Also made a track bar adjustment while they're in. Mike. 
Kyle Busch taking advantage here. They're going to put a spring rubber in the left rear. Also going to drop the track bar about a half around. Trying to tighten that car back up. Dave? Mike Bliss's guys are going to pull a couple of spring rubbers out of the left rear because Mike's car had gotten so tight. They top it off with Sunoco fuel and send uh, the leader coming into the pits back out. All right, those cars will fall in tail end of the line. We'll have some wave rounds. We'll get a restart, and we'll get back to racing in the STP 300. 56 laps in at Chicagoland Speedway, and if you're just joining us, getting onto pit road has been a trouble spot for these drivers today. I'll tell you what, they've been really, it's a late entry in the pit road, Nicole, and they've been really hustled. And you see Brendan gone hit the cone. They're all having problems getting onto this pit road. It's probably one of the toughest all of NASCAR, just struggling now with it. Yeah, really having a tough time. We see earlier here, we see Jason, or Justin Allgaier get below Danica Patrick. Patrick is really struggling with a loose race car. There's been a lot of people throughout the field that's the first part of the run struggling with being loose. That's the word of the day. Look, team yes. the leaders. Yeah, take a look at Ricky Stenhouse up there. Lost the lead for just a little bit to Sam Hornets because he's slipping and sliding. And Sam and almost slips and gets it to him. Yeah. <laughs> Still under yellow, so let's get it back upstairs to Allen for them to get ready to go back to green. Uh, a few things to catch up on, Nicole. A little bit of a housekeeping. Kyle Push did get the uh, speeding exiting pit road penalty on his green flag stop. They'll start at the tail end of the line because he hadn't served the penalty yet before the caution came out. Danica Patrick got the free pass at the caution. She was the first car lap down. She comes back to the lead lap, and we'll see Kenny Wallace and Brad Sweet get wave arounds to back on the lead lap in a minute. Our in-race reporter, Justin Allgaier, is up to seventh. Justin, Dale Jarrett, you got a copy? Dale, yeah, go ahead. Justin, I know there was a lot of talk and concern before the race started about the changing conditions, not as much sun, but we see a much wider racetrack. What are the conditions out there right now? You know, for as overcast as it is, Dale, it's pretty slick right now. Uh, I think that's why you see a lot of guys moving up to that top lane. Uh, you know, for us, our, our branch Chevy's definitely working better on the top, uh, but we got a little bit tighter at the end of the run and had to go back to the bottom. So uh, I'll be curious to see what... Uh, what the adjustments do here that Jimmy Ellis and the guys made, but uh, solid day for us, and I feel like if we can get a little bit of that clean air, we can uh, we can contend with those guys up in front of us. On a fast racetrack like this, Justin, do you is there a place that you'd rather be racing on the bottom, or do you find it kind of fun to go up to the top and, and make this a longer racetrack, but uh, where you might be in the gas a little more? No, I'm a, I'm a top guy. I uh, always have been, you know, growing up racing dirt. I was always the guy up against the cushion, so... Uh, you know, this is this is fun for me. I like running around the outside. And the other thing is that I feel like just with this nationwide car and, and the, uh, the the tapered pa spacer we have on the engine, it just really feeds us up into keeping the momentum up, and that's just what we're trying to do right now. All right, buddy. Well, good luck out there. I see a lot of those uh, brand people sitting down there in the stands towards turn one. I know they're keeping an eye on you. Keep moving forward. Boy, they look good down there, don't they, in the red. Thanks again, Dale. Justin Allgaier, in-race reporter for the day, up to seventh place right now. Yeah, they all see there on the big screen. <laughs> it's been a busy weekend of motorsports on the ESPN networks, and it's not done yet. Mopar Mile High NHRA Nationals Finals come up tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern over on ESPN2. Then next weekend, it's on to Indianapolis. First ever NASCAR Nationwide Series race at the Brickyard, Saturday 4 Eastern on ESPN. And next Sunday, we pick up our coverage of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series for the entire rest of the season. Every race on the ESPN Networks, the Brickyard 400 telecast, presented by Golden Corral, Sunday, noon Eastern, ESPN, in two words, can't wait. Can't wait, you're exactly right. Love to go to that place. So, wave arounds. Brad Sweet and Kenny Wallace to the lead lap. I mentioned Danica Patrick with the free pass. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. chooses the outside lane for the restart, and that 38 car dropping back is just to get him back into the proper restart position. He's all good to go. It'd be nice to start in front of those other cars, but you can't do that. <laughs> when you take the wave around, you have to start behind all of those other cars. Yeah, second time on a start. Stenhouse has chosen the outside lane, and it's not worked out. Hornish to the point. That's Cole Whip in the 88 to second, and Parker Clinton underneath Stenhouse for third. On well, the initial start of the race, that 12 car Hornet just blasted out front for a few laps. It looks like he's still got that kind of uh, short run speed here on the restart. Is that not all guard is saying he likes the top? I think it was blow the white line that, that lap. <laughs> With the tires fresh, I yeah. think you have to utilize that bottom some, and I think that's where Sam Hornish is really good in doing that. Stenhouse is trying to stay up on the top, 
He's charging back up towards the front. But here comes Kyle Busch back there. Kyle had to start at the back of the field because of that speeding penalty. Trying to work his way to the front. Kyle won here in 2010 after getting a speeding penalty. Entering and exiting pit road at lap 60. This time it was at uh, lap... Where am I here? Lap 51. So a lot of mistakes this year on that team that have kept them out of victory lane. This time it's a little mistake by the driver. They can't overcome it, though. It's early in the race. What can make it difficult, though, as you're trying to evaluate your car and make changes on it, you have to deal with so much traffic. You know, what do you need to do the next time? So it just adds a little bit more difficulty to a, a solid day. Watching this fight for third on back while Stenhouse reels in Hornish for the race lead. Third place, 88 is Cole Witt. He's got a whole host of pursuers. Yeah, Cole Witt ran solidly in the top 10 throughout that first run. He fell back a little bit. Looked like his car might have got a little bit on the tight side, but everything went well on their pit stops and got themselves up towards the front, showed some muscle. Like Dylan struggling with his car just a little bit right there on the exit. Watch Justin Allgaier, 31. He and Brian Scott. Oh, Michael Annette. And Brad Darty said he's trying to create space inside, but yeah, a lot of times you'll do that, try to keep that driver on the outside of there from getting down and side drafting you, but you can hang him out, make him get out of the throttle a little early, you drive it off and get you a little bit of, of extra room there. Davis 88 car looks pretty good on this run. A little bit loose, DJ, on the first run, so they added air pressure to the left rear and the right front. Also made a little bit of a track bar adjustment. Bruce Cook told me, hey, we barely passed the commitment cone when that caution came out, so that worked in their favor. Sometimes you got to have a little luck. got to have that if you're going to win these races. A challenge for them. We'll see how if they tighten that car up a little bit, how that goes throughout this run. If it's might have to go back a little bit on that and try to find a happy medium in between that loose and tight. I think there's one thing that's going to affect some of the cars during this run, too, is the sun's coming out. That could change a lot of things. Beginning to see some of the uh, thus far day-long cloud cover break apart here over the Chicagoland Speedway. Austin Dillon through to third in the three. Fourth place now. Allgaier 31. And Witt in the 88. Lead is kind of stabilized up front. Got Elliott Sadler in the two. And Brian Scott in the 11 is part of this mix also for the spots. Telling you, if you were not with us during qualifying, Elliott Sadler should have wrecked. His car stepped so far out of line on him in one and two. And somehow he saved it. But of course, because it was on his first flying lap, it messed up both of his laps. And he started a lot further back in the field than he would have. He started back in 15. He crashed. Yeah. He just didn't hit anything. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the first slide looked like it should have spun. And if he tried to correct it, he was going to go into the outside wall. Once he corrected that, then it went back again. You see right there, he lost a little momentum off the corner trying to make the pass on Cole Witt. Here comes Brian Scott trying to take advantage of that. Hardy's able to keep the lead a little longer this run. Got the jump on Stenhouse Jr. on that last restart. He's put eight tenths of a second on him. Sam out in front at Chicago Land. The race for the lead in the FCP 300 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series, Chicago Land Speedway, Joliet, Illinois, looking ahead from second place Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at race leader Sam Hornish Jr. Fans remember to check out Race Buddy Enhanced Coverage for select Nationwide Series races with more cameras than ever. Log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash Race Buddy. Across 100 miles in this race, and every time Stenhouse Jr. has made a run up at Hornish, Sam finds a way to just kind of stabilize that advantage. I think his car's just good enough this run that he can keep that air uh, disturbed for Stenhouse where he can't get a good run on him. You know, one thing that I saw is Sam move up towards the top 
a lot sooner this time than, than what he did that first run. So he may have abused the tires a little bit out front the last time, but now that he's on the bottom here, but he has been running uh, up towards the, the middle and top of the racetrack. But it looks like his car is hanging on a little bit better this time. Another run here for Stenhouse. Up to the bumper. Can he make it? Hard can, to can he clear him? him? Yeah, that, that, completing that pass on the bottom is really, really hard. He'll have to basically do a slide job if he can get in the corner really deep. Yeah, I think he might nice. be better served just to roll out and jump in the throttle. Oh, he's right away with that Ford horsepower he's got. A nice move right there. So Stenhouse Jr. back to the lead. He was the leader when we went back racing uh, at the green flag a little bit ago, but the restart didn't go all that well. He got a nice jump, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. did on that, but it sounded like as he tried to go from second to third, I don't know that he totally over the engine, but he did. it wasn't a clean transition into that. Kind of missed the gear a little bit. Docker, any concerns that uh, he may have over the engine? Well, absolutely. In fact, Ricky did come on the radio and made a comment just after that happened, so uh, uh, let's see if we can hear what he had to say. Ricky said on the radio was, guys, sorry, my fault, my fault, guys. And I went up and asked Mike Kelly, the crew chief, I said, are you concerned that he missed the ship and might have over the engine? He said, yeah, that's our assumption because Ricky did apologize to us. And right now, we won't know until he knows that something's going to happen up to the engine. But remember, guys, remember the Roush Fenway jinx in this place. They've never won a major event here. Yeah, the Chicago shutout for Roush Fenway Racing Dock. None of NASCAR's three national series has uh, Roush Fenway Racing been able to score a win at this racetrack. Really odd when you think about it. And somebody says that to you, and then you go back and you dig out the record books, and you look it up, and you go, huh, that's true. Yeah, you just think about all the great drivers, especially at these mile-and-a-half tracks that they had at Roush Fenway with Jeff Burton, Mark Martin. Of course, you got Kenseth and Biffle and Edwards now, so uh, a lot going on. It might take something like an engine problem to hold him back today because he looks like the strongest car here by far. Caught from 13th here, Brendan Gaughan, 33, Kenny Wallace, 09. Just a, a, to button up the thought on the engine on that six car while we watch this and see Kyle Busch try to dig his way back to the front from the speeding penalty. I didn't hear from that onboard audio any great spike. I just heard a little, you know, like a, a blubber for a second while he tried to get it in gear, but I yeah. didn't hear it though, you know. I think he did a good job of yeah. catching it. I think he, he realized he didn't have it fully engaged and he had to basically check up, get it in gear and go again, and it cost him to leave, but I don't think it hurt the engine. Cole Witt starting to slip back a little bit. Brian Scott in the 11, trying to pass that 88 car for seventh place. High hopes today for Brian Scott. And this 11 team, we heard from him on Countdown earlier. Yeah, cars look solid today. It doesn't seem, for some reason, to have the speed after these uh, the green flags that we've seen. Car hangs on really well, but uh, he loses a little bit of time, especially to the leader. So you can see here as he tries to make the pass there, get some air to the nose of that car to where he can make the turn and go by. I've got a ways to go to get up to the front to contend for the win. But for Brian Scott in that 11, this has been statistically his best track in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And still uh, plenty of time to try and find a way to get to the front and be a factor in the outcome. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has won three races already this season and started off really showing a lot of great strength in 2012. Then hit a stretch where things just didn't go well and they didn't score the kind of finishes we expected from them that was the right hand column those previous four races but now look at the last three they got it rolling again with this six team 
back up to the average finish and the laps completed that we uh, came to see at the beginning of the season for Stenhouse. And thus far today, he has led 54 of the 83 laps that have been completed in the STP 300 at Chicagoland Speedway in search of his fourth win of this season, what would be a third of those four. A lot of folks think that Ron Santo's induction to the Baseball Hall of Fame is long, long overdue. And reports out of Cooperstown today are that his wife's induction speech was just phenomenal. STP 300, Chicagoland Speedway, Joliet, Illinois. Just about to its halfway point today, the six, the defending series champion driver, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., has led most of the laps. You'd think a guy that led most of the laps in the race would be really pleased with his car's performance. Well, we know by now that's not always the case with drivers. Because we're getting looser and looser and looser, so we need to pay attention to the weather. It's not, I don't think it's the weather as much, Ricky, is that rubber track rubber back up after the caution. There were so many caution laps that pulled the rubber up. Well, we started looser and now we're looser, so we're not doing something right. Well, evidently they're doing something right. <laughs> they're leading by 3.1 seconds. <laughs> Drivers are never happy with their race cars, hey, are they? If you say everything is just fine, then they sit in there in the pit area and have snacks and things like that. So you've got to keep them on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> Allgaier, 31. Elliot Sapper, 2. And Brian Scott, 11. Hey, that, Brian Scott's moving to the front now. 5th, 6th, and 7th places. Last few laps, that 11 has been the fastest car on the track. Yeah, since we talked about him there before the commercial, he has passed, made three passes. going to make it four probably here shortly with Justin Allgaier. Here comes Sadler back on the outside, though. Look at the run he got. Is that, There's some draft coming into oh, play yeah, on this absolutely. racetrack. Like these big yeah. spoilers these days for live cars run. Yeah, definitely. It, it's fun to utilize that, too. You know, you think about the draft. Most of the time, we're just talking about Daytona and Talladega. But, you know, when you're running at 180 miles an hour here, you can use that. See, Elliott Sadler really putting it to good use. And he was actually kind of using the lap car to, to get that draft off of. But he's found something on the high side right there that's worked. Whoa, Sadler. Yeah, a little bit there. loose right there. Making it work. And funny to me how we talked to Justin Allgaier. Have the Sadlers on board. We talked to Allgaier. Now he goes to the top. I was going to say, he told you about how he was a top guy. And then we've seen him since that restart be hugging that white line on the bottom of the track this whole run. Yeah, and sometimes your race car kind of dictates where you have to run. I, most of the time it does. It's in charge. You're just hanging on. <laughs> And in some cases, the traffic dictates it, too. Yeah, this time, you see the 11 car forced to try to work on the bottom side to try to get by Sadler. That's the one thing I see about Brian Scott. He's able to use both, or kind of all of the racetrack. His car really is good on the bottom. If he needs to go to the middle and top, he's able to utilize that part of the track and make passes also. Talked about Chicago Land Speedway being Brian Scott's best track statistically. Three starts, two top five finishes. And of five career top fives, two of them here at this track, Vince, and he's showing again. You know, what's really been discouraging for these guys is they had DNFs on all four of the mile and a half this season, so that's the kind of bad luck that they've had. It's the wrong place at the wrong time, but right now, Brian Scott's got a race car underneath him. Crew Chief Kevin Kidd encouraging him, telling him he's got the fastest car on the track, but Brian responds, as you see him look underneath Elliott Sadler, Brian responds, the track position is just so tough to get. These guys are really digging for every single spot Alan. trying to gain track position by passing cars vince and uh, brian scott trying to creep toward the front yeah and it's not going to get any easier i'll let him know that as he gets <laughs> up there in the top five those guys up front are pretty good yeah right? he's gonna have to get it the old-fashioned way <laughs> uh the guy that is at the very front is really good stenhouse jr since passing sam hornish has moved away from him by 4.2 seconds Halfway coming up, another round of pit stops coming up very quickly. So take a break, come back, and get ready to cover those for you. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in command at halfway in Chicago land. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. leading the STP 300 at Chicago land Speedway, reminding you to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Some green flag pit stops have begun. Brad Sweet is in now, Mike. 
and he's been saying he's been tight under throttle, way less grip than last run. He'll make an air pressure adjustment and a four-tire change. Kyle Busch has already been on and off the pit lane. None of the other lead lap cars have been in as of yet, but we expect them all shortly. There are 14 cars on the lead lap. That's the kind of pace that Stenhouse Jr. has set through the first half of this race. Only the one caution flag so far. And again, one of the themes we talked about just before the green flag, Dale and Andy, was race gets very few cautions here. A hard track to drive, a hot day. These drivers are going to have to be up on the wheel, and you're just not going to have a lot of swings at adjusting the race car. Yeah, that's the frustrating part. You want to get your hands on the car if it's not right. But if you have all these long green runs, you only get those opportunities when they're running out of fuel. And you get pit road, and then you don't have a lot of time to work on it. And a lot of the leaders are on pit road now. Vince. Well, Brian Scott's going to get a four-tire change, also going down a half round on the track bar to try to tighten him up a little bit at the beginning of the run. They wanted to come into the pits on the previous lap, and he got caught in traffic. They almost ran him out of gas, Dave. Austin Dillon saying, I'd like to be freed up a little for the long run. It just tightened up there at the very end, so they'll make an air pressure adjustment for the three car. Give him four tires, fill it with Sunoco fuel. Doc? Parker Clegman said, I've worn out that right rear tire by running the bottom of the racetrack. Air pressure change in the right rear, four tires, and the 22's away. Elliot Sadler saying he's losing right rear grip. The longer he goes into a run, Luke Lambert will bring him down pit road. They're going to make a chassis adjustment and go to work on the right side of that race car. A four-tire change here on the two for Elliot Sadler and fuel. The 18 of Ryan Truex is in. Truex says loose on entry is killing him right now, but he's too high up tight. So no co-fuel and a track bar adjustment as he leaves, Doc. Ricky Sinhouse said the car is loose and getting looser tonight. Definitely need rear grip on exit. They made a call. They're going to go down one round on the left rear. Air pressure change air out of the right rear. Four tires. Got to get it completely full of fuel. Now that change on the left rear for the chassis. Getting left side tires off. Trying to finish the pit stop here for Stenhouse. Right behind him, the 12 car, Sam Hornish Jr. Sam said the car is perfect for 15 laps, and then it gets very, very tight. Go back on the adjustment, four tires. Stay. Chassis adjustment for, uh, for uh, Justin Allgaier, already complete four tires and fuel. His car was a little bit tight. Brendan Gaughan said the car is still a tick loose. It was very loose before the previous adjustment. He's now hanging in the top 12, wants to get this car in the top 10 as best he can. Fence. They've really worked on Danica Patrick's on and off laps on her pit stops. They feel like it's really costing them some spots. Right now, she says the car is too loose on entry and on throttle. An air pressure adjustment, four tires for Danica Patrick. Dave? It's a 44 car. Mike Bliss was improved on this run. They just need to go a little bit further, still a little bit tight. And Mike was worried about that when I talked to him this morning. He said, this cloud cover, ugh, that's not going to be good for us. So they're going to try to keep loosening that car. Vince? The 43 and Michael Lynette having another good run today. He says it's a little too tight off the turns. They're going to go down on the track bar, Sunoco Fuel, and four tires. The 09 of Kenny Wallace, he says it's mostly mental. The pop the car is pretty good. It's freeing up a little bit. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right front. Four tires and Sunoco fuel for Kenny Wallace. That completes the cycle of green flag pit stops. And what I want to see is when Stenhouse Jr. and then Sam Hornish Jr. cross the finish line because Stenhouse's lead was 7.8 seconds over Hornish on the last lap before the stops. It sure appears to be a lot more than that now. Yeah, it sure looks like that. Stenhouse did. looks like a really, really good job of getting on and off pit road. Well, whatever it is, it's getting ready to shrink up right now. Caution's out. Debris turn number two. Fortunately, the yellow just after the cycle of pit stops completed, so it doesn't really alter the running order any. Well, we will get to see if Stenhouse is going to choose the outside again. He's just yeah. that twice. And what do you think? Hasn't led when he came back around. I'd just be my choice. It looked like he was going to lead last time or had a good jump until he kind of missed going into third gear, but we will see. I give that outside another go. I think I'd take the inside one time just to see maybe which <laughs> one was best. 
Joe Nemechek gets the free pass on the caution. First car not on the lead lap. Joe in 14th place. And with all the leaders having just been on pit road under the green flag, doubt we'll see very many under this caution. So let's take the break here. Come back and get ready for the restart. Second yellow is out. Speedway on a steamy summer afternoon where the action has been at times frantic and furious. The slick conditions at this racetrack causing even the race's dominant driver to have his hands full at times. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has been out in front. Watch the backfire on a green flag pit stop from Ryan Truex's car. Catching the rear tire changer, Mark Armstrong. Fortunately, he's just fine. But the action has been... Not to make a pun out of that, but very hot at times, uh, both on the track and on pit road. In the STP 300, Chicagoland Speedway, there's Hollywood. He's fine. We've seen that a couple of different yeah. times this season. And, uh, boy, that's scary, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's not a good thing. I've changed rear tires before. That exhaust, even when it doesn't backfire, it's still a lot to deal with back there. Just three cars pitting under this caution. Brendan Gaughan, Travis Pastrana, and Kyle Busch, Mike, who since that speeding penalty on the, that first cycle of green flag stops, hasn't gotten any closer to the front. Kyle Busch, uh, his car has been ill handling. He's been trying to rally back from that speeding penalty. To no avail, still trying to dial that race car in, which is why they just came down pit road. I pit this lap here. We need to get right here for a window. And we've heard much of that same tone over the radio over the last uh, 30 or 40 laps, Alan. Lots of frustration from the inside of that cockpit for Kyle Busch. He had been struggling with a very loose race car. They tried to rectify it by putting a spring rubber in the left rear. He expected that to tighten the car up. It didn't happen. They still have a very loose race car and a handful so far. All right, Mike. Well, you know, when you're a driver of Kyle Busch's caliber and on these mile-and-a-half tracks, you're used to winning most of them. Uh, having a car that you just can't get a handle on has got to be a frustrating thing. I promise, I promise it's frustrating, you know. And Kyle used to use this nationwide series a lot of times when things weren't great over on the Cup side. It's not that he's having a bad season over there, but he's sitting outside the, the top ten in the Sprint Cup series right now. And... Uh, he, he used this to do that, and now he's had frustrations here. It, it just all kind of builds up. He was really hoping to come here, I think, and kind of turn things around all the way around the post-series. But one of the things that they have is a little disconnect in that communication. They're not able to get that car to do what Kyle needs it to do. So Kyle Busch back in 12th place as we double up for the restart. Reminder that coming up later today, the NHRA Mopar Mile High Nationals, 7 Eastern over on ESPN2 to wrap up the Motorsports Weekend coverage. Then next weekend, it's on to Indianapolis and the first ever NASCAR Nationwide Series race at the Brickyard. Saturday, 4 Eastern on ESPN. And we kick off our Sprint Cup Series coverage where we bring you every race for the rest of the season on the ESPN Networks with the Brickyard 400. Telecast presented by Golden Corral. Next Sunday, starting with NASCAR countdown at noon Eastern time with that wild card race, Casey Kane's win at New Hampshire last week. Really, for all those drivers to make the chase, it's about one thing, winning. That's right. Check his lineup out here, Dale. Don't try the inside. Stand out. Hey, you got to give everything a little bit, right? Especially when the outside hasn't worked as of yet. 85 to go. You have to be careful right there on the inside. It's not spinning the tires. Got away pretty clean. Here comes Hornish. Now, I think one thing we're seeing, Sam Hornish's car is just so strong on the start. You know, it seems like that his car is tight enough to where he can really, really be aggressive. Then now drove it down in that time. Yeah, wow. Talk about aggressive. Kyle Busch in that 54, trying to make something happen on this restart. Yeah, he's made up three spots already. Barely even completed a lap here. Mm -hmm. 
Seven car, Danica Patrick, trapped a lap down at the end of that cycle of the green flag pit stops. She's the second car a lap down. 44, Mike Bliss, and 30, James Busher that you're riding with, racing with Patrick for the free pass in case the caution comes out. Yeah, that's Bliss right there in the 44, right in front of her. See Busher working, just trying to get by Danica. See if he can get up there and get in that lucky dog spot. Sadler 2, Colwyn 88, Justin Allgaier 31, 6th, 7th, and 8th. See, just up in front of them, Mark Kligman trying to take that fourth spot back away from Brian Scott. Two young drivers having a great run here today. Kligman used every inch of that racetrack <laughs> before that safer barrier coming off the floor. Yeah, maybe a little bit of help from Brian Scott, too. They're giving him a break right now. Brendan Gone, trying to get 11 from Mike Lynette, 33 and 43. Kenny Wallace is lead lap in the 09 car. A lot of these drivers and teams said they wanted the sunshine because that's how they set their cars up yesterday. They've got a track full of sunshine right now. Let's see how that works for some of them. Air temperature 88 degrees, forecast high of 92 this afternoon here in Joliet. I'll tell you a funny situation with that 09 car because the team that fields the cars for Kenny Wallace and for Travis Pastrana, they generally, it's a single car team and they only field the one car per race. Well, they, they kind of almost overlooked the fact that they had entries for both Kenny Wallace and Travis Pastrana for this race. Uh, Overcommitted there a little bit, but they're doing a good job on the track. Kenny Wallace having a good race. He's on the lead lap, running 13th. Managed to uh, put it all together, get the people, get the cars, get the equipment, and out here doing, uh, doing the job for the sponsors on hand. Nationwide Insurance, Dash for Cash. Those four drivers, highest finisher of the four, Gets the $100,000 bonus today. Right now it's Stenhouse, but he's got Hornish not far behind him. And we'd heard about heard Stenhouse, even though he's led the majority of this race, talking about his race car being really loose. And we probably have the most sunshine right now on the racetrack. Doc, how's that affecting this six car? Well, the spotter just told Ricky, said, hey, Ricky, by the way, the sun's out. Ricky, you know, I, I can see that. I'm okay with that. The car apparently is pretty good right now. I think the big concern for Ricky is what happens if we have to have another restart. He said on the last restart, he did everything perfectly and still barely held on to the lead. He told the guys on the radio, hey, guys, we've really got to work on this third gear in the transmission because I'm, I'm hanging on on a restart in front of the 12 car. Don't oh, forget the late caution. Uh, it's been the trend so far today. Sam Hornish's car better in the initial shorter run, but Stenhouse better over the longer run. Question is, do we get the late yellow? Not always the case at this racetrack. In fact, hasn't been the case in recent times. We talked about uh, what would Parker Kligman do on this day, in this week of whenever he heard that some of the races he was expecting to run were taken away from him. That Pinsky had signed Ryan Blaney to drive in three races. Well, he's having an outstanding day. Battling hard here with Austin Dillon for that third spot. He said he was a man to watch, and he is today. He's racing. Yeah, that's what you like to see in drivers, you know, especially as they're put kind of under the gun, so to speak. This young man has a lot of talent. He's out here showing that today, that he can get the job done in this car. Parker Kligerman campaigning full-time in NASCAR's Camping World Truck Series drives for Brad Keselowski at a team that Brad owns. Racing for that championship had the schedule to a limited number of starts as Brad's counterpart, if you will, in this Penske-owned 22. But that foundation or expectation given a little shake this week. 
I'll say this, it's never been easy, but it is a particularly tough time right now as Dylan Wiggles there to be a young driver trying to establish a foothold in the top levels of NASCAR. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has got a good foothold. He's a nationwide champ, and he's led most of the laps today. Caution out for a spin in turn two by Brad Sweet. Some of the leaders have pitted. Mike? And Elliott Sadler complaining that his car is extremely loose, saying at one point he feels like he's going to spin out in every corner. They're going to make a track bar adjustment and a four-tire change for Sadler, Dave. Well, Justin Allgaier said, uh, my car is way too tight and I've got no side bite, so they make a major chassis adjustment, air pressure adjustment as well, and we'll put on four sticker tires. There is the car involved in the spin that brought out the caution. Brad Sweet, who was running in 17th place, a lap down, a lap that he lost on that exchange of green flag pit stops, and he had trouble in turn two. Hey, he jumped a cushion. <laughs> That's a pretty good job with it. We almost caught that. Yeah, he did. He really almost caught it. Didn't hit anything, though. Probably all worked out for the best by this happening. He brought out the caution. He hadn't lost another lap. So Thank you. Tight tight yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's kind of important. Yeah. All that pavement down the inside of the backstretch here at Chicagoland Speedway. Safety. Where that used to be grass. That makes so much difference having that down there. See, it's a good illustration of how good it works. This was grass. It'd just take off. Instead, it just slows the car down and drives around to the pits. So five cars, including the leader Stenhouse Jr., did not pit under this yellow, while all the other lead lap cars did. Reset that for you and restart the race. Coming to the restart, there are the five who did not pit. Yellow car, third row back, outside. Sam Hornish Jr., first off the pit lane. Brendan gone, speeding, entering the pits. He's at the back of the line. Mike Bliss got the free pass. He comes around to the lead lap in 15th place. 68 laps to go. Elliot Sadler making it three wide down the back straightaway into three. And Flickerman hanging to the outside of Ricky Stenhouse, trying to stay in that fight for the lead. Sam Horns has been so good on the... On these restarts, I thought with those new tires, he might shoot up through there quickly. Looks like he might be fighting a little bit of a loose situation, though, here to start with. Sadler's the one that came charging to the front. I really like the position Elliott Sadler's in because they made that pit stop. Didn't lose a lot of track position. And he's getting it quickly back. But he only needs one more can of fuel to make it to the end of the race. The rest of the cars that didn't pit will have to have at least two cans of fuel. You see, he's trying to take over third here. And before we had that caution, he was falling back. He was so loose that he had lost a lot of spots. I believe he had dropped back to about eighth during that. And wasn't, and was losing a lot of time to the leader. Now he's going forward up to third. Let me just reconfirm a couple things just to, to tie up the big package. Stenhouse, Kligerman, Dillon, Scott, and Witt did not pit under the caution. Sam Hornis just took fuel only, as did Michael Annette. Other people took fuel and tires that are trying to dig their way back up through the group like Allgaier and, and Elliot Sadler. Well, they probably made an adjustment on Sadler's car, too, because he really had been complaining about a loose situation. I think that probably had a lot to do with the sun coming out here for the last while. Whatever it was, they've really made a good adjustment, got him up uh, to where he can contend now. A good adjustment. It was good strategy. They, they really executed well that last little round of stops. 
Ryan Truex 18, James Busher 30. That is not a race for position. Busher first car one lap down. Truex lead lap in 11th spot. This is a race for fourth place. Sam Hornish Jr. trying to go by Austin Dillon. away from Dillon by a car length after picking up that spot. So many things all tied up now as you get to the later end of the race. There's the strategy, there's fuel to the finish, the dash for cash money, the championship, because all the dash for cash drivers this race are the top four in the championship. And Elliott Sadler gaining some of these spots through this, the way some of this has played out is protecting the damage to his championship lead that might have been caused otherwise. It certainly made a big difference to be able to get your car better towards the end of this race because it looked like they, he was in danger of losing to everybody right behind him uh, as far as some points. And that race for third on back. Hornish in third, Doc. Interesting call, and you guys are all over it. You I'm know, sorry, what fourth. happened with the, with the 12 car? They basically said, we're going to go come in and top it off with fuel only, but we're also going to put a half around the wedge in it because the sun has come out. It will help our race car. Right now, we can't beat the sixth car. So we're getting a little fuel, maybe adding a little more grip in the back of the car. We may have a shot. Mike. And, Doc, uh, Dale Jarrett was talking about the adjustments made to Elliott Sadler's car in that last stop. As we heard, extremely loose. So they dropped the track bar to try to tighten it up. Still, though, Elliott Sadler not completely happy with the race car just yet. Says he has too much front grip and still not enough rear grip at the moment. Mike, thanks. Elliott was the one I overlooked when I counted back to that race for fourth. Sorry about that, Doc. Now, they've been struggling from the get-go about rear grip. We've heard him say, Elliott Sadler, all, from the start of the race, that he's needing rear grip. So they've been working on it, working on it. They've got it better. Still, I don't think he's quite good enough to run with Ricky Stenhouse, at least on even ground. He's got better tires right now. Little double duel here. Dylan three, goes past Hornish. And Allgaier, 31, gets past Brian Scott. So I know we touched on it a little bit, but let's go broader on the whole strategy where people like Stenhouse, who didn't pit, stand versus people like Hornish or Sadler, who did pit, and how that might play out as this race goes on. Well, we're just about to get inside a fuel window, and if we do that, then you'll see everybody come in and get fuel, even the ones that just pitted, so that everybody can make it to the end. But if it goes green, you're going to see a lot of the, the cars that pitted, you're going to see them only have to take one can of fuel, maybe two tires. The other cars are going to have to pit a lot shorter than that, and they're going to have to get at, at least one, they're going to have to change cans. They're going to have to get two cans of fuel. It's going to take a little longer for their stock. So it just depends on whether it makes yeah. it under green or under caution. And how it all might play out. Kyle Busch, 54, joining this fight for a spot. Brian Scott back by Allgaier for sixth, and Kyle running in eighth, trying to close in. Yeah, he's trying to close in, but I've been watching the scoring monitor here, and even though he's moved up into the top ten, which will be good for them, his lap times are still a couple of tenths off of what the leaders are running. And right behind Kyle, 88, Cole Whip. It's been a solid day for Cole Whip. He's been up at the front uh, a little bit, uh, but been solidly in the, the top ten most of the day. Not really up there contending for the lead, except after that one set of green flag pit stops where the caution came out right after, but solid's a good word. Not the word we use to describe Kyle's day, Mike, solid. Uh, no, anything but, <laughs> kind of up and down, had a penalty, and has had a handful with his race car. If you've been listening to his radio like I have, uh, you can sense the frustration. I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, I put it at about a 9.5 right now. He's extremely unhappy with the car and how loose it has been all afternoon, Dave. Mike, when Cole Witt goes back to the gas, it's just a little bit free. That's the condition right now. They are one of the teams, however, with the luxury of having two fresh sets of tires behind pit walls. So if there happens to be two cautions here and they want to come in both times, two sets of stickers for Cole till the end. Yeah, throw that wrinkle in, too, to this whole how's the strategy going to play out at the end in the track position. No, no. But that's the fun, isn't it? We get to watch and find out. 
Stay tuned. Could even set up for an Elliott Sadler who got four there. If this runs all the way through, he might just look at two tires, save a little bit of time on pit road, get him closer to that six. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. dominant on the day, but 116 of 146 laps that have been completed, seeking his fourth win of the season. And clear of second place now by about one second. The STP 300 at Chicagoland down to its final 54 laps with Stenhouse leading. Back at Chicagoland Speedway, it's been an interesting day for Kyle Busch. He's won at this track a couple of times, but not in contention today. No, he had a pit stop problem, had a left rear tire just a little bit slow, and then he got caught speeding out of pit road. And he's got himself coming, he's coming back to the front right now, but he's in eighth position, and the car is just not where he wants it at the moment. Frustration level for that 54 team is awfully high by now. Travis Pastrana still learning on these tracks. A mile and a half has been something that he struggled with, but today he's out there just logging laps. Yeah, he's done a good job of logging laps, currently in the 20th position, only a lap down. Keeping the car really clean, getting a lot of seat time and experience. If you're looking for the class of the field, look no further than the driver who's the defending Nationwide Series points leader. Struggled with a loose race car early on, but he has been out front most of the day, and that is where he is right now. Yeah, he's looking really good. We've heard all day long, everybody's loose for whatever reason. They're all making adjustments on their car. Here, Ricky sides, they make the fake out, he stays out. And now he's leading the race. Yeah, you know, I sat and spoke to Ricky uh, yesterday. We were sitting there in practice. He said they really have gone back to their basic Thanks. setup. You know, he kept saying it, kept saying it, because I asked him, what's happened? You've been hit or miss. He says, I'm really excited because I know what I got when I get in that race car tomorrow. And absolutely, he has got a rocket. <laughs> been a rocket. He's been out front 123 laps. I think that counts as a rocket yeah, ship. That's exactly we right. saw Austin Dillon dominate at Kentucky. Now it's uh, Stenhouse's turn to dominate here. He's a second and a half ahead of that car, the 22 of Parker Kligerman. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Parker Kligerman right yeah, now, Nicole. He's been running so good, guys. I uh -huh. mean, this last time by the fastest car on the racetrack, even faster Ricky Stenhouse. I mean, and Stenhouse has been the fastest, but now Kligerman's cranking it up, driving that Roger Penske car. We generally see Brad Keselowski driving this car, but he's what really putting on a great show today, yeah. looking good. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tonight and tomorrow. First, tonight at 8, Josh Hamilton and the Rangers face off against their division rivals when they take on Mike Trout and the Angels. Then tomorrow night, it's the Rangers again. This time, they're hosting Adrian Gonzalez and the Red Sox. That's at 8. Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell. Monday Night Baseball, presented by USA. Both on ESPN. Both games are available on ESPN3 and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Let's head back upstairs. Alan? Nicole, thanks. Watching Sam Hornish Jr. start to fade a little bit. Just gave up a spot to Brian Scott. And Hornish now back to six, Doc. Yeah, they added a half around the wedge. You know, when he came in under yellow to be able to maybe deal with the sun coming out. But now it's sort of gone the other way since the car is way, way too tight on exit of the corner. That's costing him some time on the racetrack. Sam ran in second place for a lot of this race. Yeah, what happened was they were running behind Stenhouse and not able to really make any ground up on him. They want to come up with something that maybe they can beat him. So they come make that adjustment and it goes the wrong way. There's Kyle Bush running eighth. You know, we've been talking a lot using the word frustration today, and I mentioned this yesterday during our coverage of practice, but Kyle Bush has come within a whisker of winning a couple of races this year. And how the discussion around Kyle trying to get this first win in this 54 might have been different if he did not got nicked in the right rear corner when he had the checkered flag in sight at Daytona on the last lap. Or if Joey Logano hadn't beaten him by three thousandths of a second at Talladega. But instead, we still talk about Kyle winning in his own car. And when they have an off day like this, I, I guess it makes it seem a little more. Yeah, they would have taken a lot of pressure off the team if they had gotten one of those wins. And maybe they could have relaxed a little bit, executed a little better. But now the tension is really high. I mean, it, they, you can tell the team is frustrated that they cannot get Kyle Busch, the winningest driver of the series, to victory lane. Well, I, I, I look at two things, and I agree with a lot that you're saying there. The two racetracks that you talked about that he 
had a chance to win were restrictor plate racetracks. They did that. These other type racetracks where it takes a combination of handling of aerodynamics and engines, there's a lot missing there because they have the best driver that's ever been in this series as far as winning races, and he can't get the job done in this race car. And you can see right now, he's sliding this thing around. He's going down the apron almost with the left front to make the thing turn sometimes. And then it's just the back ends out from under it off the corner. So they've still got a lot of work to do to get this into a winning type race car for Kyle Busch. Cole with there coming up the challenge. Kyle for that eighth spot. Stenhouse Jr. extending his lead over Kligerman to 1.9 seconds now as we come into 40 laps to go. Here the gap from the leader to second place. There's Kligerman having a nice drive in that 22 and then back to third place. Elliot Sadler who finds himself five seconds behind Mike in that number two car. Yeah, he's five seconds behind, still very much in contention for the victory this afternoon. But in his mind, he knows his team needs to do a little bit better job on their next stop if they are going to go to victory lane. We're taking Grimp out of the front. We're not helping the rear or whatever adjustments we're trying to make. Yeah, 10 for my old six shot right here. Shake it off. Get you good nose, another good run off here. You gotta figure out something for rear grip. We just gotta figure out something. As soon as that sun pops up, man, we lose a ton of time. Sadler's biggest concern is off the corner, obviously, but the car isn't the only thing he's been battling this afternoon. As we noted at the top of the show, he's got a pretty bad stomach virus, hasn't really eaten solid food for two days, but he is gutting it out, guys. And Mike, as we look on the headrest of that uh, shot of Elliott in the cockpit of that car, 104 degrees inside the car. So just picture yourself on a 104 degree day, let alone being wrapped up in the helmet and the fireproof long johns and the fire suit but just being outside on a 104 degree day when you've had the flu for a couple of days, and Elliot really is gutting one out today. Yeah, sometimes you just have to do this. Now, get if you move that thermometer down closer to the bottom part of his seat there, where the driver's getting a lot more off the floorboard and everything, and as you said, Alan, with all the other things, the helmet, the suit, everything, it's quite a bit hotter than the 104 that we're seeing right there. So, uh, nice job by Elliot Sadler here today, and he's trying to get some rear grip. I, Andy, I think, from my perspective, I'd rather be trying to get more rear grip. If the front's not turning, that's almost impossible sometimes to fix during the race. Yeah, and sometimes uh, I mean, they've been adjusting this car all day and have not been able to get there. I'm like you, I'd almost rather do that. But now we've got some of the leaders making pit stops, the ones that did not pit under the last caution. Dave? Austin Dillon said that his car had no side bed at the beginning, of the beginning of the run. He really didn't want his team to tighten the car up at all. So he will lead the parade down pit road, the first one among the leaders to come down pit road. They will make a chassis adjustment. Looks like a wedge adjustment for him and air pressure. Doc? Four tires for Sam Hornings. Remember, the car got very, very tight on exit when they came in and pit it and made a wedge adjustment. Air pressure only change. Four tires getting a full of Sunoco fuel earlier than he had to come in, but the car just going away. And this should be the final pit stop for Parker Kligerman, who knew he had to impress the Penske organization today. And indeed, he has done that. He said the car is loose off. Air out of the right rear. Four tires are going to change. And top it off with fuel. Kligerman left side tires going on. Let's look pit road today. The 88 car of Cole Witt is complaining about the same problem he's had all day long. That is when he steps on the gas pedal. It just wants to turn that car around a little bit too free. They'll make adjustments with that. Four sticker tires, Doc. Here comes the leader, the sixth car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky, for the first time today, said the car is really becoming a concern. He said the car has gotten very, very tight. And it's you up to today. Well, there appear car. Press sweep. Caution my is out. In the middle of three flat pits Get it the rest of the week. It's away with another spin on turn two. I believe Elliot Sadler, the leader. Stenhouse had a little bit of a slow stop there, too. Trouble on the left rear. Sadler's going to be the leader, but he hasn't pitted yet. Stenhouse has. We'll see how it all shakes out. Get your turn back to the center a little bit. And for the biggest thing is right rear grip, middle off. 
what it does do is erase the big lead that Stenhouse Jr. had when this cycle of pit stops began. Actually caught the six car lap down. He will get the lucky dog. He's the first car shown here a lap down, so he should get the lucky dog. But that will still place him behind Sadler and the other leaders that have not pitted yet. It's a big break. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. This, yeah, there you see the spin by Sweet. Same exact thing. Got up out of the groove. Happened to get a little bit closer to this inside wall. And Sadler's team, they set him up strategy-wise to take advantage of a break. They got one right here. Look how happy they are. <laughs> Way to go. Good job, guys. You got us this time. <laughs> and, you know, Sadler's two wins are, are have, this year have been Luke Lambert calling a really yeah. good race of strategy. So, looks like he's done it again today. I'm yeah, going to work out the win. Yeah. yeah, a number of times. He's really impressed with the way Luke runs the race and, and handles all of that. And, and he's got 100% confidence in the calls that he makes from that pit box. So, Stenhouse, Dylan, Hornish, Kligerman, Scott, Witt, all had pitted before the yellow flag wave. Here come the rest of the lead lap cars with 31 laps to go. Vince. The 18 of Ryan Truax, just two free all the way through the corner. They tell him the track temperature's up 25 degrees since that previous run. It's going to be an air pressure adjustment and four tires of Sunoco fuel, Mike. Elliot Sadler looking for some right rear grip. They'll go up one round on the track car, only one can of Sunoco race fuel and four tires on the two car. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch still looking to tighten that car up. They'll make a wedge adjustment, an air pressure adjustment, four tires, and fuel, Dave. Bottom right, you see Justin Allgaier, second place. He'll get four fresh tires. They made a wedge and track bar adjustment. He was having trouble exiting the corner. Sadler off the pit lane first. You see all these cars got four tires. He stole track position away from the dominant car today, the six-car Stenhouse. That's Ricky, top of the screen there, just coming around, having been waved by the pace car. As the free pass under this caution, when the yellow waved, he was the first car on lap down. Yeah, and as fast as he's been all day with the position he's going to be in, he's going to have to have a caution flag to get himself in a position to win here today. That's being that free pass car. Got to yes, start, start behind all, all behind. the cars, all lap the cars, cars and right. everyone. Yeah, there's going to be a couple things maybe help work in his favor. There's going to be some wave around cars here. That, uh, yeah, that will be in his favor. We'll, yeah. we'll, he won't have to start behind them. We'll, we'll end up behind him. Plus, I mean, the fact that we had like a dozen cars go to the garage in the opening uh, 15, 20 laps of the race. And that's thinned the herd out a little bit, too. But, boy, you know, when it, some days it's your day and then it turns not, Mike Kelly sitting there just finished bringing his driver to pit road and that caution flag waved. So off the pit lane, Elliot Sadler, Justin Allgaier, Ryan Truex, Kyle Busch, Kenny Wallace, Brendan Gaughan, Joe Nemechek, Mike Bliss, top eight, Allgaier sitting second as our in-race reporter today. Justin, Dale Jarrett, you got us? Yeah, Dale, go ahead. Well, man, I know things haven't gone exactly like you would have wanted them all day. You've been very competitive, but now you've got yourself up, up there in second spot. Going to be less than 30 laps to go. What do you think? I think uh, Jimmy Ellis and the boys are doing a great job down there making great pit calls. Uh, you know, the branch Chevy's been okay. Not quite as fast as we'd like it, but that last adjustment there, we were just too loose off the corner. So hopefully uh, this, this next adjustment will get us right where we want to be at and give uh, old Elio a run for his money here and get out in front. Hopefully uh, these guys that are, you know, going to wave around here will keep them, uh, keep them uh, a little bit occupied with some of these lap down cars and let us get out there for these last 30. All right, this shorter run, do you think that plays into your hand a little bit more with your race car? Seems like we're really good to start with. Uh, and then we, we fade a little bit, and then we come back. So I don't know what it's going to do for us, but uh, we're going to give it 110% and go out there and, and do all that we possibly can. So hopefully uh, this just might work. Okay, buddy. Good luck. Thank you. Justin Allgaier running in second place. So the cars that pitted 
under the green just before the yellow came out. We already mentioned Stenhouse is the first car lap down and gets the free pass. Now you're going to see a bunch of cars go past the pace car. Six of them are getting back on the lead lap with wave arounds. So all guys that had pitted just before the yellow. Parker Kligerman, Austin Dillon, Sam Hornish, Brian Scott, James Busher, and Cole Witt. This was Sam Hornish just after the yellow. Do not give up track position if you don't plan on going further than anybody else. I know, Sam. I understand. Okay, then, to say I've learned that, you know, we don't give up track position in that short pit. Chad Walter, the crew chief for Sam Hornish. And Chad... Chad, you made a call to come in in short pit, and what, why the call? Ah, uh, we short pitted to try and get ahead on the adjustments a little bit, and then, you know, we were running around fifth, and tried to just get a, a few extra seconds on fresh tires, and, you know, it, it just kind of bit us. It's kind of my luck. Sam's been doing an outstanding job today in the Alliance Dodge Challenger. Penske's given us great horsepower and a great car. Uh, crew chief might screw up just a little bit. Hope, hopefully Sam can dig me out of a hole here. All right, Chad Mulder, by the way, apologizing profusely to Sam. He said, hey, it just didn't work out. I tried to do something. It didn't work out in our favor. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., see that six car. He's 16th in line. He's the 10th place car. The way the rules work, that's where he needs to line up. The restart, 28 laps to go. Like he was blasted out of a cannon, still coming down the back straight away. Yeah, Elliot Sadler there got a great jump, and with a race car that's kind of free, that's important to get yourself separated from anybody being on your rear bumper. Right truck, you up a lot of racetrack there with trying to make the pass on Justin Algar. Second place there, Kenny Wallace to the inside, Ryan Truex in the middle, Algar on the outside, and Kyle Busch looking for a hole. Algar trying his best to clear himself of this mess so he could get out there and try to chase down Elliott Sadler. Sadler better run and hide because that six car is moving fast. Stenhouse passed six cars in the first lap. Not all of them for position. It was impressive nonetheless. But he's moved up from 10th to 7th in two laps and he's looking for more. After sixth place on Brendan Dawn. You think he heard me say he couldn't win from back there? Took that as a personal challenge here. <laughs> I don't think anybody had to tell him. No, I don't think so. That's exactly right. He's doing man, we, sometimes you know you have a fast race car and then you, you do all the right things with it, and he's done that all day long. It's just incredible to watch him drive this thing. This is a 300-mile race. Stenhouse has led 200 miles already today. As Ryan Truex wiggles, Kyle Busch goes after him the third. I will tell you that Sadler's opened up a two-and-a-half-second lead on Stenhouse right now, so he's still got a long way to go. So let me just help you out here with something. I never heard you say Stenhouse couldn't win. I heard you say he was going to need a caution to win. Okay. And with that lead that Sadler has, he still won. I think he does. Well, one thing Sadler's doing now, they haven't done all day. He's running really good lap time. He's got clean air. It's like they've made that adjustment finally that's got his car driving like he needs it. Yeah, down under 32 second bracket, which we haven't seen much of, and that's uh, by far the fastest that Elliott's run all day. What a turn of events that caution brought out. The race, the championship, the dash for cash, the whole picture. And Kyle Busch up here still battling hard. Trying to get as much out of this day as he can. But they're in third right now. Battling for third. Still fighting that ill-handling race car, though. Set of corners did not go well for Stenhouse in the sixth. Well, he's not had to deal with this kind of traffic all day long. He's had 
clean air on the nose of that car out front. Just maybe had lost the lead one or two times. But he's not had this kind of traffic to deal with. That changes the way your car drives. How about Truex, though? Having a great run. Yeah, this, this, this young man's got a lot of talent. Let's hope that he gets himself in a position that he can get a full-time ride in a car like this in this series, and he'd be battling for a championship. First time he's run back-to-back -back races all season. For Ryan Truex, the 20-year-old younger brother of Martin Truex Jr., he just gave up a spot to Kyle Busch there, Vince. Well, and he was running second at one point after that restart, and then he and the 31 got next to one another, and Ryan didn't like Allgaier's tactics. Why does the 31 got a door drive me like that? Come on, man. Yep, he does it every week. Recovered nicely, running fast laps as it's a little too free right now, but this car has come to him in the run as it has gotten longer, so they're optimistic it's going to get better. Stenhouse going to go by Truex here, Vince. That's going to be for fourth place. I'll tell you who else has got my attention is Kenny Wallace is following Stenhouse right up through this line of cars. That's Kenny in the black with the, the uh, neon green numbers 09. When he went to the apron a while ago to make it three wide, I knew he was pretty serious about trying to make something happen in this race. Kenny Wallace doing a great job. Here comes Stenhouse, though. We cannot get a car adjusted for anything. Last ten races. Just stay with it here. Come on. I, I really do. I know he's frustrated with the way the car maybe drives on the early parts of the run, but he's got the best car on the track, and I, I don't understand the comments, really. I think it goes back to something we talked about After yesterday a little bit in, in the practices that we covered. Guys not getting out and racing around other cars. Your car's going to drive totally different when you get back there. You're back in 16th spot restarting than what it was, has been all day when you were up there leading this race. So you're going to see a lot different race car. But uh, what we see is he still has plenty of speed. May have enough time, 19 to go. 2.8 seconds back. Parker Kligerman was right with Stenhouse for the first couple of laps of the restart. Has not made his way through the traffic as quickly. But then I don't think very many people could. Remember how dominant that six car has been today. Uh, he's still got a fast car. Elliot Sadler's going to have to really focus and try to make the absolute best laps he can and see if he can hold off Stenhouse. I think Stenhouse is going to make a run at it. Yeah, it's about 15 hundredths different from the last uh, lap. But Stenhouse was faster than Elliott Sadler. Here comes Kenny Wallace trying to get another spot. Comparing at the line, the top three. Kenny Wallace shows up there in the top three. Yep. And that may not look like a significant amount as far as looking at Stenhouse. Yeah, it's well over a mile an hour, but on the stopwatch, it's about 37 hundredths of a second. That's a lot. That's cutting in quickly. And that air keeps getting cleaner as he makes these passes. The car just gets faster. And still the good side-by-side -side for fourth place. Kenny Wallace clearing Kyle Busch. Here's second place. Stenhouse not going to waste any time making this pass. Yeah, if he doesn't have to spend much time here taking over second, which he did. Now the only car that he's looking at is the leader of the race. And now the gap's down to two seconds. He's made up eight tenths of a second. Here. Keep those RBMs up, baby. Come on. <laughs> Mike Callan off the spotter cheering on Stenhouse. Yeah, he was making a pass there and outran Sadler by a little over two tenths of a second on that lap. 15 laps to go for Elliott Sadler, the leader. Mike? Well, we aren't the only ones watching Sadler come, or excuse me, Stenhouse come through the field. Elliott Sadler just came over his radio moments ago asking about the six, wanting to know if he's closing on him. He's very much in his head right now. Sadler just trying to focus on these final 15 laps, trying to keep the six behind him. Racing for $100,000, too, now, these two drivers. Rusty, I don't know, Stenhouse may not be happy with his car, but he's still got the fastest car on the track. Oh, Alan, I can't tell you how many times I've had a bad handling car, and the crew chief would come across and, Rusty, look, calm down, I know the car doesn't feel right to you, but you are the fastest guy on the track. And so the crew chief always helped me keep myself under control, because as a driver, you're out there running, the car's pushing the front end, it's loose and slipping and sliding, but you know what? Your car is slipping and sliding less than the rest of them, but you don't know that. Whoa, that's that's whoa, what he's going through now. But I'll tell you, Kyle Busch, we just saw him slip and slide. He's been fighting a loose car all day long. But a crew chief to help calm you down and put it in perspective, Alan. 
So if you're Mike Kelly, what do you tell us then, how Sandy? Oh, yeah, you just say, hey, look, we, we kill in the field after you run a few laps. Just let the car come to you and then to get your work done. Right now, he's down to he's 1.6 seconds behind Sadler. He keeps that up. He'll catch him. He's going to be right at him because he's got Let's go. You'll get him. 13 laps to get that done. He's beating him a little over a tenth of a lap or somewhere right around that now. So that's going to equal out to being pretty close to his rear bumper. Put me in the cockpit. You've been in these situations before. You're Stenhouse. You can visibly see you're closing on Sadler, right? Yeah. And the biggest thing that you have to do in this position, stay calm and not overdrive the race car. You have a faster race car. You can see that closing up. Just don't overdrive and make a mistake. That'll cost you a lot. Okay, I'll get you in the leader's car now. Now what do you do if you're Sadler? Yeah, you, you've got to not make a mistake there either, but you have to drive hard. It's probably the hardest that you've driven all day, and you want to, you want your crew chief to be giving you that time that, that they're closing in on you because you have to, might have to change your line a little bit and try to pick things up. How much are you looking in the mirror at this point? There you go, about 33 yeah, you're looking, go and That's why I want my crew chief telling me a little bit more, so I'm focusing totally on what's out front of me. Coming to 10 to go, another two-tenths of a second. Chopped off the lead that last lap by. Where and how you catch some lap cars may have something to do with this, too. If you're the leader, if you're that second-place guy looking ahead, trying to gauge the traffic that you see. And one thing that we've seen on this run is the previous run that a lot of the cars had moved more towards the bottom of the racetrack, but they've moved back up now as the sun is really out. And so it, the lap traffic shouldn't affect them quite as much, but it could have an effect. We saw lap traffic decide the race last week in New Hampshire. This is a lot wider racetrack. Right there, it was only about four one hundredths of a second, so that worked in Elliott Sadler's favor. Now you can see Stenhouse trying some different lines through the corner that time. He's trying anything he can to try to close this gap. And that number, the 1.08, you'll see that number change. That's real time difference first to second. And man, Stenhouse is charging. He's yeah. using it up. Yeah, he got a little run there. Three, well, it turns one and two and was able to beat Sadler by a little bit. But they're down under 10 laps here, coming to eight to go. Stenhouse is going to get to the bumper. Not pictured while we're watching this great race. James Busher is coasting down the pit lane. I tell you, this is so frustrating. You're on the crew, uh, the crew chief and the crew's on the box. You're watching this, there's nothing you can do, but just just watch it, hold your breath, and hope. It's like for Sadler, you just hope that you can make it and hold him off. Three-way race for position here. This is ninth, 10th, and 11th. Yes, Kyle Busch has fallen that far back. That oh. no trouble. Hornish into the back of Kyle Busch, and Busch and gone crash. Well, the one thing that Elliott Sadler didn't want to see, and Ricky Stenhouse said this is what he needed to make sure that he was going to have an opportunity. Caution out, seven laps to go. Looked like Sam Hornish was trying to cut out from behind Kyle Busch to make it three wide and misjudged by just a skosh. Just enough to cause a big pile up. Oh, it destroyed Brendan Gonskar. Got no break, they got no break, they got no break. And a race for ninth place has gone wrong and has erased all of the lead. You can see <laughs> the frustration in the yes. cockpit. That Elliott Sadler had over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. How many times does it happen in these races that we see that one team car leading the race trying to win and it's one of the others that's involved in the caution that brings it out and maybe it's going to hurt those chances. Elliott still has a chance, still has a fast car. Yeah, that's, that's frustrating. They, they've executed just perfectly today. Not the best car. They've done a good job adjusting it. They actually were out to lunch in the first part of the race. Yeah, there's been no doubt of who's the best car out here today. Now, sometimes the best car doesn't always win, but Stenhouse Jr. is sure shown that his car has been the fastest all day. Right here's a replay. See exactly what happened. See Hornish go yep. up. Just oh, like you said, Alan. Tap. Yeah. Just misjudged enough. Turned Kyle Busch just straight right into Brendan Gone. Good to see Brendan get out of the car. That was a hard lick. I really think that Hornish was going to try to maybe push Kyle by there, and then he got such a run that he felt like that he needed to pull out, and that's whenever he caught him, just in the left rear. And mm. 
Well, here was the view we had of it when it first started. On board with Sam. Still off there. You got some car run up on the 17 into three here. 17 on the bottom into three. Bracken outside. Clear. Kyle Busch was frustrated already at the inability of being able to get a handle on the handling of that car. This won't make him any happier. And I don't blame him. No, I don't either. He was racing hard. He was still, even though he was still fighting just in, just inside the top 10, he was still driving as hard as he could go. Well, when it's going bad, though, it, goes, it, it just seems to pile up on you. And as you mentioned, fortunately, Brendan gone okay. His car was coming back down the banking. Spotter was telling him, hold it up there, hold it up there. And he said, I got no brakes. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody hit him on his way back down. Kyle to the garage. You don't have to stay there. You have to have that phone there, right? That You do have to replace it if it gets dislodged. Except there's no sheet metal there to hold it in. Hold it. Doc? Sam Hornish a moment ago on the radio just to apologize to his team. He said, please apologize for me. He said, that was totally my fault. This is what Sam said. He said, I looked down and saw my hood pins were about to come out, and I looked back up, and I'd hit the 54 car. I said, my fault, totally my fault. Well, a race for ninth place gone wrong in the late laps here at Chicagoland Speedway has put us under caution, erased the dwindling advantage that Elliott Sadler had over the hard-charging Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and set up what is going to be a very few laps left restart, if not a green-white checker overtime finish. Well, you see from that replay, he really, really pounded 54. Oh, yeah, you see Mike Kelly said, this is our opportunity. We needed it. And not, what we not good. I said, well... There's nothing you can do about circumstances like that. You, just, yep. you can do all you can do, and they've done a great job all day long. I will say that the last restart, Elliot Sadler was on it, really got a good jump on everyone. Now, no, how about it one? wasn't yeah. the six car. Well, did you say his? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to see uh, uh, exactly what he could do here. So Sam saying he was looking down, thought some of the hood pins were coming out on that 12 car. And and it didn't work out very well. Well, caution's going to help Ricky Stenhouse complete his charge to the front. Can he finish it off, Doc? Let's find out from Mike Kelly. Mike, you now have been able to catch the lead. The question is, you got a restart. That's been sort of an Achilles heel today. Can you make the pass on the restart for the win? Uh, we'll see here. Ricky's been dominant all day. Car's been really good. Just uh, green-white checker here. We'll see what he got to do. He's got to get through the restart. If we, we can get through a clean restart here and get, get clear of this guy of... Uh, Turn two, I think everything will be fine. It's a lot of money on the line here for two laps. It'll be fun. Hundred thousand dollars for a clean restart, Mike. With Elliot Sadler's crew chief now, Luke Lambert, you had your lead go away. Your thoughts now as you get set for this restart? Well, I mean, we'll see how it goes in this restart right here. Elliot's done a good job on the restarts all day, and um, six hadn't been the best in the restart, so it's going to be a good fight right here. Um, real proud of this uh, Hunt Brothers Chevrolet team right here. They fought real hard all day to get to where we're at. Elliot Sadler seems pretty happy with the race car since they made those final adjustments, guys. So waiting for the cleanup to be completed. And we'll see how many laps we're going to have left to settle this race out. Yeah, that threw a lot of debris. They're having to blow the track off. But you can see a lot of stuff flying as those cars make contact with the wall. So you've got Sadler, Stenhouse, Allgaier, Michael Annette, and Kenny Wallace now the top five. Hey. I'll go back to that drafting part that you brought up earlier. Yep. The six and the two stay side by side. Look for somebody in third or fourth to be able to make it three wide. And then possibly, we're talking about these two guys in front being one to win. But how about Justin Allgaier or Michael Annette? We saw Kenny Wallace make it three wide early on the restart. And some of those drivers are not eligible for this $100,000 bonus. But to get in position for that, they'll be racing hard. Vince is back in the Nationwide Series garage. 
Well, taking a look at the 54 car of Kyle Busch, obviously done for the day. Kyle came out of the uh, hauler in his uh, street clothes and declined to comment. Obviously, very frustrated with the way his day went and ended here at Chicagoland. All right, Vince, thanks. Yeah, I'll have to give Kyle that. that as a driver, there's not much you can say about that. You know, I mean, picture said it all. He had a struggle all day long. I, you can understand that. Uh, sometimes you just better off. As much as we want to talk to him and his fans, I'm sure would love to hear from him, uh, he's probably better off not having not the not to talk right now. Free pass under this caution. First car that was a lap down, Danica Patrick, who will come back around onto the lead lap and be in 14th position for the restart that's going to be for a green-white checker finish. Brendan gone, checked and released from the infield medical center. So, doubling him up. NASCAR in an effort to give fans a green flag racing finish. If the race is under caution at its scheduled conclusion, we'll extend the race. We will go green. Race for the lap, then the white flag will be shown if nothing happens. The white flag indicating the last lap of the race has begun. The next flag ends the race, be it the caution flag or the checkered flag. Stenhouse Jr. going to get that outside lane as Elliott Sadler chooses the bottom. You're better than him, bud. He knows it. Yeah, I just don't want a green white checkered to end this. I want to make some laps here. Let the best car win. 10-4. I know that. You know that. Let's go do it. You can do it in three laps. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has led 200 miles of this 300-mile race already today, then made a green flag pit stop, and just after that, the caution flag came out, and it trapped him a lap down. He got the free pass. He restarted 16th in line, in 10th position, behind some lap cars, charged his way up to second spot, and was closing on Elliott Sadler, who's been feeling under the weather after a stomach bug all week. Sadler's team starting deep in the, in the field, in 15th spot after almost crashing during qualifying they worked their way to the front now they find themselves side by side for a green white checker finish for the hundred thousand dollar nationwide insurance dash for cash bonus and by the way two of the top three in the nationwide series championship who wins it green white checker attempt number one green 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 Pushing Sadler clear of Stenhouse. Kenny Wallace inside Stenhouse. Stenhouse going to give Whoa. it a charge on the high side. Had a wiggle there. You want more good lap here, brother. White flag, the last lap has begun. We see Allgaier close in. He really charged down into turn one. Here comes Stenhouse on the high side. Oh, squeeze there. That might have been just what Sabo needed. Final corners. Stenhouse gets clear of Allgaier. Can he have enough to run at Sabo? be too late. Elliot Sadler is going to win the STP 300 at Chicagoland. Baby, yeah! That was an amazing performance. Elliot Sadler, you are the man. Way to dig deep, brother. You dug deeper than anybody today before you even won the race. Andy, I've heard you say it before. You take a driver that's injured a little bit or a little bit under the weather, and sometimes you get their best performances. We just saw that out of Elliott Sadler the other day. What a great drive. That was a gutsy performance. Mike, it looked like it was going away. Then the caution came out and the restart. Now they're going to go to victory lane. Yeah, and a lot of anxiety in the two camp. No one feeling it more perhaps than Luke Lambert. What'd you think on that final restart? Well, I mean, I felt like we restarted real well all day and the six kind of struggled all day. So I, I hope that would play in our hands and it obviously did. Elliot Sadler did a heck of a job. We're real proud of RCR and everybody on this Hunt Brothers Chevrolet for working real hard all day and putting us in that spot. It seemed like that final adjustment was the money adjustment. What did you guys do to make that car so good in the end? Well, we fought real hard all day to get rear grip, and then we started kind of hurting the front. We kind of went back on some of that stuff, and it worked out perfectly. So real proud of Elliot and everybody. Congratulations. Elliot Sadler in victory lane. We're going there now, Alan. 
Well, Elliott Sadler started off the season on fire. Four top three finishes in the first four races of the season. Only Is one top three. Coach, you can get me better. In the last 13, but Sadler's going to celebrate in victory lane today. While Sadler celebrates, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., after leading 200 or 300 miles, is going to be left to settle for second. Well, you had the dominant car throughout so much of the day today. It was coming strong before that yellow and then the restart. What happened there, Ricky? I just cautious didn't fall our way. Um, our ranchers reserve Mustang was, was fast all day. We had the car to beat. Uh, caution just kept falling at the wrong time and, and just, uh, just got us. We, uh, the, the two got a heck of a push from the, the 31 there and, and just got out in front of us. We couldn't do anything with them. Strong finish, though. Second place, not what he wanted, but second today, Dave. And Vince Cautions may not have gone Ricky's way, but they did go Justin Allgaier's way, and then a tough drive to uh, push the leader through and then hold everybody off. Uh, my hats are off to Elliott. They, they, I, I knew if I could push him out there that we could we could race for the win there, and that was fun racing. And I can't say enough about Ricky here, man. They, uh, they dominated the race, so I feel bad that they didn't win, but great day for our branch heavy. Um, guys did an awesome job. Jimmy Elliott made a great pit strategy, and... It was really, really cool to be the in-race supporter, have STP on the in-race supporter there. And, and also, we made the Nationwide Insurance Dash for Cash, and we've been the first guy out the last two times, and it's been miserable. So we go to Indy with that, and I'm, I'm pumped to go to Indy. Let's, uh, let's go have a good race there. Third place finish, and he can race for 100 grand next week. Vince Welch? Scott Zipadelli gave Kenny Wallace a good piece today, and Kenny got up on the wheel and drove it. Fourth place, well done. How, how was it? Was it as good as it seemed? Well, it was really loose. You know, that's what happened to me there late in the race when I gave up the spot. To Michael Annette, but you know, uh, this Toyota Camry family farmer's car was in the middle of the corn belt. All the farmers are starving here. They've lost their childlyhood. All their money, their corn's burned up. I'm a racer, but if, without the family farmers, American Ethel, this car wouldn't be here. So uh, that, that's, just, that's just shades of the past. That's the Herminator. I'm used to that. Just been a while. Got up on the wheel today. Kenny Wallace, he'll be in the dash for cash next week, Alan. Indianapolis Motor Speedway hosting the NASCAR Nationwide Series for the first ever time next Saturday. What will be a fabulous event? Dash for cash drivers, Elliott Sadler, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Justin Allgaier, Kenny Wallace racing for the $100,000 Nationwide Insurance Bonus next week. And then it's on to Iowa Speedway, Watkins Glen, Montreal, and more. Join us at the racetrack. These nationwide races have been entertaining through the first part of this season. No reason to expect they won't continue to be that way through the coming months. Elliott Sadler, $100,000 Dash for Cash check and a win at Chicagoland.